so it all comes down to this. So it's been years on this car and I'm at a stage now where I don't know if I've felt this much stress in a long, long time. The car's all wrapped up because it's been raining all night and it looks like it's probably gonna rain on the way up. So we're heading up to PPG today up at Eastern Creek and we'll take the cover up there and see what the boys think and start getting some paint on it. So we're up at PPG, so we're up early this morning, so 5.30 alarm, outside, meant to be raining, so we fully covered the car last night, and of course, it hadn't rained all the way up, which is awesome. After we left, it's, it's now raining back at home. So we're here, we've unloaded. John's come in this morning, had a look at the car on the outside, checked the lines. We're pretty happy with what we got, so now we're pulling the car apart, so we can start getting organised to paint the inside of the doors, and the door jams, boot jams, all those sorts of things. So we'll keep you updated and um, through the process. Righto, so I've taken the opportunity to grab hold of John. So John Aristus um, has helped out on the Mustang, on, um, well, way, way back with the flag on the, the coupe. Yeah. Um, geez, that's a long time ago, John. And, and then, of course, we did Tailspin about seven years ago. And we've had this relationship that's been going for a long time. That's John on the right there on the buzzer. So I'm on uh, doing the hard areas, all the bits and pieces, and John's, um, tell me what's going on with the buzzer, mate. A lot of people will be a bit horrified about that. Yeah, so the, the buzzer we're using is actually an electric sander. So with electric sanders, you get really good speed control. So they're not out of control like a pneumatic would be, you know, buzzing its head off and, and uh, gouging and, and taking out, um, you know, big chunks. So with that sander on the flat, large flat areas, we can get in there a bit quicker. Uh, we're on a pretty decent timeline with uh, this particular job, so any time we can get in there and use it, we do, like you are there. So Yeah, so Darren and I are on the 400, and you're over there on the 800, so I'm, I'm on a 400 with no interface, so you can put a foam pad between the machine and the paper, which is about 5mm of foam. Um, so we've done that with 400, and it'll go over to John and he'll do it with the 800, and John's using it with the interface and that enables him to do the round edges and all and get rid of all of those 400 scratches to go in um, and we're going to prime again so I mean it's not that critical but it's nice to get it as good as you can. Yeah and at that stage you've done most of the hard work with the filler so it's been you know primed and, and blocked and it's now we're just finessing it and making sure it's smooth enough for the paint. And it's interesting that you know I've, I've done my best to get it to where I think it's finished and you get a fresh set of hands come in and they go, oh, what about this bit? What about that? You know, is this meant to be flat? And that to me is a bonus for me. And you can see there the amount of lighting. And I always think my shed's well lit, but when I get up here, it's quite amazing. And I think it's a good thing to take note that if you're trying to build cars at a reasonably high level, you need a lot of light. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. And you can see here, there's a lot of experience here that we've pulled in uh, to help us with the, with the tight deadline that we've got. So how's that for a colour? Casey yelled out, he said, you come and get the camera on this, look at this, this looks pretty cool. So we'll get to that shortly. So the, the guys helping out there, so obviously um, a few guys that had even helped with tailspins all yeah. those years ago, and yeah. you've got very good continuity with your, your guys here 
So these blokes are in your technical and trialling? Te technical, training, yeah, product, you know, these guys are very hands-on. Um, if you, they're working their own projects or help other people with projects, so a lot of experience and like I said with our timeline. Uh, yeah, and, and I mean a lot of that's um, to do with your product development here as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, very much so. So we always like to try uh, stuff that might not necessarily get used in the custom world, um, bring in some of the uh, stuff that we trial in the from the smash repair world into custom, like the wet on wet primer we're about to use for all the insides to give us a good ground coat. Yeah, so they're all back masks to keep it off the other, obviously the outside. So we'll get that wet on, wet on. And then we're out here doing the jams. Um, so door jams, and I've got a lot of hours in those, I can tell you, to get it to this stage. And there's John with his machine again. But we're working on um, getting that all nice and smooth. So here's the wet on wet going on. So explain to me the process there, John. So the wet or wet, it's a, it's a very thin layer. It's a, actually a self-leveling product. So it dries, if anyone's familiar with electric coat, it dries really smooth and flat. So it gives the actual paint surface a really good uh, level surface. We get more, more gloss from the clear. It fills up any of the light fine scratches and just gives us a much better quality finish and also helps with the overall color and, and coverage. So we're going with some color now. Now we've used, um, the Vibrance range, yep. and it's um, not water, the other. Explain to yep. me what we're doing and why, and you was telling me about hardeners and things. So yeah, with the, um, we're using the Deltron range. So with Deltron, it's it's a very um, user-friendly system. We can, you know, use it to repair cars all day long, or we can throw some candy and some special effect flake in there, and use it for our Vibrance and our, and our custom colors. So, been around for a long time. What we do is we put a little bit of um, hardener in there, so some of the, the hardener you'd use in your clear coat, and that little bit of hardener helps, it's almost like a glue, it, it sticks to the surface really well, uh, and gives us a little bit more gloss in our, uh, in our clear coat, and just gives us that really good adhesion in between the layers. And one of the reasons I know for, for going with the Deltron, because I'll be doing some of this myself as well in yeah, my booth, so that's right. I, I haven't used water and, and we had that discussion that we'd be better off to stay with um, the solvent based, the fact that I'll be doing bits and pieces um, and obviously if I need to do any repairs as we get closer to the, the finish line. Um, so the boys um, double gun in there. Yeah, they're using the same type of gun with the same setting. They've set the, um, the, the fluid and the flow rates and the pressures all the same. So they'll get uh, a similar finish and a sim make sure the colour's the same. And then when we paint the car, we'll use the same settings again. So what guns are they on there? So they're using the SADA. You've got the new 5500X, the 1.3i, which gives us a nice, really, really nice big fan. Um, it's, a, it's a HVLP. We get a lot more base on uh, in, in less passes. Um, and we'll use that on the car as well and, and by doing that we make sure we keep reproducing the same colour consistency. So that's something I wouldn't have thought of. So obviously, you know, air pressure, nozzle, but gun type yeah. um, and also flow all yeah. has an effect on the way it lays down. Yeah, absolutely. You know, spray guns, you know, especially if you're painting things in stages, setting the gun up the same way each, each time will give you that same quality and, and particularly colour. Um, so, yeah, if you've, if you've got a, you know, a small compressor at home, the RP version is ideal, it, it requires less air, um, and if you've got a nice big screw compressor like we do, the HVLP is ideal. So, another thing a lot of people always say to me is, I watch this and go, wow, look at the amount of clear that's not going on yeah. the panel. Explain to me what the process is there and why that, you know, appears that way. Yeah, so the optimization is quite interesting because these guns now actually transfer more product onto the panels than the old style of guns. The old style of guns used to used to lose about 70% of the clear out into the overspray. Um, these guns are a lot more efficient and you get a lot more transfer onto the actual surface. So even though it looks like we're losing a lot of clear, um, yeah, that's just the, the good just, uh, airflow in the boom. <laughs> well, it's the flow, and I, and I think it's the way it breaks it down because yeah, the nozzle, the, the nozzle yeah. 
increases that atomization, doesn't it? Yeah, so with clear coat, we're using a higher pressure to get a much smoother surface. Whereas with the base coats, because they're nice and thin, we don't need as much pressure. So again, you're emitting less overspray. So what sort of bar or PSI would they have at the gun with that? So if you're using a HVLP or an RP, reduced pressure, you're at about two bar, two to 2.2 bar for the clear. And when we flow cut, we might even bump that to 2.4, and we'll drop that nozzle down to a 1.1, so it's even finer atomization again. Okay, so we've done all of that, give it a bake, um, and I think this is the same day. Yes. So that sort of blows me away, that the panels are off and on a stand and being rubbed and it's only been an hour or two. Yeah, so the clear we've used, because we know we're going to flow coat these, um, the clear that we're using dries nice and fast and snaps up nice and hard so we can get it onto a stand and hook into the outside like we're doing there. Yep. So these are the, um, this is the stuff that I use obviously in my work with my fillers and also the primers. Um, and that's my favourite block, the one you're on there, John. And what, what grid are we on now? So we, uh, we had a good look at the panels, a uh, fresh set of eyes. We agreed we'd start with some 180 and then finish it up into 240 because we're, we're going to put some wet on wet primer on these again. And you'll notice as they're, they're doing this, and like I said, I get to, got to a point where I'm going, oh, there we go, I've actually grabbed the camera, it was a bit quick, but, and that's a, a new paper, I believe, so that the technology even in the sanding is, continues to grow. Yeah, the Galaxy's a film paper, so you have a traditional paper like, like the gold that you use in some situations, the Galaxy's coming, that's a film abrasive, and then the other one that we have is the mesh, which is like a fly screen. Yeah, so I've used a lot of the mesh, but this one's good, more, I find better for finishing because it's a, more like a traditional paper rather than having the grids in the mesh. Yeah, it gives you that feel, and, and that's, that's why we're just So you'll see, it, I think, as we get in a bit further, some of those panels, obviously, you, you've cut back through my primer, and we'll talk about that as we get to it, but we've tried to double team this now so the jams are done and they're in so while they're now getting painted yeah the panels are back on the stands being rubbed and um, so the guys here now so we've pretty much hard masked to the edge I believe yeah um, to do this so we've got the color on now the boys are smashing some clear on it and then that'll get un well baked and then come out um, and at the same time the other stuff's getting rubbed so we can get some primer on that. So I think we're going to pull the panels on and off about four times. Yes, yeah. Once this is done we'll put the panels back on, make sure the alignment's right and do the final block with the car assembled. So I'm sure we'll get to that in a minute. So if you're looking at it, so here we go. So now you can see that boot lid there is a bit of an issue on the corner that um, someone's found and Darren's now taking the the hinges off and you'll see in the photos I've opted not to paint the hinges yet because <laughs> he's smiling because I'm painting him out because these doors, norm him and I normally take anything between three and five hours to fully align the car properly and we know we've got to have them on and off all these times. So um, I've lost my train of thought now but they're all being blocked now so 180, 240. So now we get to get a look at this colour. So tell us about the colour. I know it's on one of the earlier episodes, back around Christmas time. Yeah, so the colour incorporates the candy dye and some of the nice glass flake into the actual Deltron tinters. So we've got a blue aluminium instead of a traditional aluminium. So we've got blue aluminium, blue tinters, uh, blue flake, blue candy. Lots of blue. Lots of blue. So, we, And the reason we do that is because this car will be shown in all different lights. It'll be seen in different light sources. So each one of those pigments and flakes uh, reflects differently with light sources. So it's good at indoor lighting, it's good in the out outdoor lighting. And using the pigments that we have keeps the color nice and clean. Now the thing that, that sort of blows me away all the time, this was painted and baked for how long? How long would the bake cycle uh, we be? We gave these, uh, it's about a 40 minute bake. So 40 minutes and then they walk in and start unmasking and dragging it out and start yeah, rubbing yeah, again. Yeah. So if I was doing something at home, I'd, I'd paint it. I don't have a, a heater, so you know I'm waiting the next day or whatever before I'm going to touch anything. So here we are, it's back out. Darren's putting the doors back on again and getting it ready to block the outside. You can see that door's blocked, but the quarter's not. So we're gonna gap that up and you can see now, 
So that's Chris, I think. So Chris is on, the, I like that block as well. That's like what I call a half sheet, half yep. the old sheet. Yep. And at the same time, we've got Casey in the other booth. Now explain this is this booth, because it's quite unusual. So this is our um, gas infrared booth. So we have a, the, the drying is different to a traditional burner uh, that uses gas. This uses gas, but through the actual arch there. So we can dry and keep the heat in, in the booth uh, using a different type of technology. So this is wet on wet primer. It's just a double coat, which is really convenient. Uh, and it'll dry nice and smooth, like we said, like an electro coat type finish. And this is mixed in a, what you class as a G6? This is a G6, yeah, spectral grey 6. So it goes up to 7, which is almost black. And this will help with um, helping us when we sand it, it almost acts like a guide coat we can see it better and will just help us a little bit more with the coverage and overall color so this booth's open-ended as well this is an open open uh, yeah no doors it's a bit bit strange for people to see but it's got very big motors uh, pulling out the fumes and you can see the overspray is quite you know disappears very quickly two motors in two motors out so good good suction and uh, yeah, plenty of windows. So this sort of booth gets used in the, the quick turnaround? Yeah, this is a booth you'd find in a multi-shop organisation, an MSO, where they're trying to get things out quickly through the day, and that's how they do it, not not by cheating, but just by using different technology. Technology. And I like this primer because it's got a bit of a sheen to it. Yeah. We can see what we've got. Yeah, it does. And people know this front guard because I've been doing stories well, on that. So gives us an idea where the lines are and how the lines are looking. So we've got all that body sanded now, so it's had um, the 180, 240, 400. Uh, I think we finished it with 320. 320? Because we're going to prime it. Because yeah. we're going to prime it. Okay, so 320 and then all masked back again. So this is today. Yeah, day three, so Tuesday. So we had a, a short week. We forgot there was a public holiday. Yeah, that's right. So we had a short week, so let alone being on the time frame we were. All hands on deck. So that's been primed. So now this is the final finish. This is the final. So this has already been blocked twice. And this is now with a very fine abrasive. Just again, we, we don't want to paint. We want to avoid painting over straight line scratches. Um, you know, again, electric sander, five mil law, but very important. Um, and this makes sure that when we put our base on, there's no surprises as far as, you know, straight line scratches showing through. And, and that happens obviously paint. a lot in silvers and things like, you know, you've judged for many, many years um, in this high end sort of area. And one of the issues is if you've got those scratches in the base coat under the clear, you're, you're stuck with it. Yeah, that's right. When you look through the clear, you can actually see those scratches and it just ruins a good paint job. So here I am <clears throat> fixing a problem that shouldn't have been there that I'd sort of had in my mind to maybe keep the spot welds in the, the drip gutters. And when we got up here and got it under the lights and we looked at it, we decided that really wasn't going to be the look. So we've used a, a, a SEM product, a 2K um, filler sandable filler yeah um, which is like a drip gutter type product I guess is it it's what's the terminology yeah or uh, well, has many terms <laughs> we just it's just a sealer yeah so it's a sandable sealer so we yeah. put that in it goes hard and, and then you can sand it so versus like a urethane that once it's in you're stuck with whatever finish you've got so we're just finalizing that and getting that sorted and you can see that primer that's on there now is like that G6 and you'll see the boys now in the background rubbing the backs of the door so they're getting rub that will be effectively for the um, the flow coat yeah and we're doing that so yeah. that we're not then rubbing the panels that have been colored yeah. on the stand not, yeah Don't, um, so won't damage them and at the same time someone's back in the other booth just giving the mirrors a bit of a prime to get those make sure they're painted at the same time we might hang them a bit better the next time <laughs> so that's that g6 primer so those main panels i was sort of fitting panels and that up today so the majority of those um, are painted with the g6 primer that we just seen from the panels from friday yeah 
So what's the rubbing process that you've used there to get them ready for colour? So just to really get into that fine peel, we've again started with a bit of 240 and finished with some 320. Um, and then, then we've put the tray, we've cleaned them, put some guide coat back on and then finished them with 400. Where we've rubbed through, we've, we've put a little bit of an aerosol type of epoxy on there only because we're rubbing through to the primer, not to metal or filler. Um, and that's quite safe to do. And then we'll just run back over that with some 800 and have that ready, ready for paint. So you can see there the guards been rubbed and we're working along. So I'm still playing gutters, trying to get panels on. As the boys finish rubbing the underside, then I'm putting them on the outside. So we're heading towards masking now. And that next process now is we'll get it all cleaned up, masked up and then get the, the colour and the first lot of clear on. Make it look pretty. Make it look pretty. So so that so we're doing it closed door, I would say to make sure the colour's consistent. Yeah, I, I'm one of those people that likes to paint the car assembled. Mm -hmm. I don't like surprises later on. I want to make sure the colour's even and consistent. Um, I like to have a look at it as we paint it rather than bolt it together later and get a surprise. Yep. So I just like to paint it all together and then um, you know, once we're ready for flow coat, we'll strip it all back to, to panel by panel and focus on one. Check all the edges and, and then yeah. flow coat them. Yeah, make sure the edges are right. All right, John, thanks for your feedback. Um, we'll get some more footage now and get it all finished up and get it on air on a couple of days' time. Just thought I'd grab the opportunity. While these guys are masking up, I've sort of almost got nothing left. Well, I've got nothing left to rub because everything's in the booth now. I just wanted to take the opportunity as we wind up this episode. There'll be more on the paint process in a fortnight's time. I just really wanted to really get you guys to understand how much I appreciate what PPG have done and what we've been able to do over nearly 20 odd years now. And people might say, how do I get the opportunity? Well, it's just come from many, many, many years of being involved with the one company and being loyal to that company and in return the opportunity to see really what's going on at the, the very sharp end of technology, design and having these guys give their knowledge to me and help me to achieve my goals in trying to produce the best car I can possibly do. So thanks again for joining us, don't forget to subscribe, click the like, hopefully there'll be lots of questions from this one and if I don't have the answer I'll be able to get John to help me with those um, and enjoy what we've been able to show you and in two weeks time we'll show you the finished product.